Alright, I am going to the museum because I need a bit of a time out, you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright, so... I am in the museum, in the Maison de Yves Saint Laurent, and uh, it's quite a, a change of scenery, isn't it? Guess whose name I run into first. Remember him. I just literally wrote about him today. He is a friend of Rose Hanbury's husband, the Marquis of Chamblou. I guess he's one of the benefactors of the musical. So yeah, so Rose Hanbury and her husband are friends with Francois Marie Ban Banier. And yeah, he supports this museum. Anyway, let's go to the next wing. Let's see what we can find. Just a little respite from all of the craziness of the, the royal family, you know what I mean? A little Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> so by the way, I have heard that the Princess of Wales will not she will not be um, attending Easter services. Is that correct? However, I was watching another squad member and he said that uh, in May, Harry and Meghan will be in the UK for the Invictus Games. And apparently, the royal family will be having a garden party at the same time, quite coincidentally. I have a hunch that they're going to unveil Kate Middleton on that day to compete for ratings with Megan. They're going to rain all over Harry and Megan's Invictus Parade by bringing Kate out. On that day, what do you think? Yeah, it's going to be a ratings gra grab, I predict. And um, let's go down here. They're going to bring her out on that day to get the attention away from Harry and Meghan intentionally. I mean, assuming that, uh, yeah, that's assuming that, um, you know, the AI experts are wrong and that video of her giving the cancer announcement is authentic right because what do you think she's going to be wearing <laughs> to the garden party So that was an interesting little visit and um, now it's time to exit. Merci monsieur. Is that okay? Bon, bon so we got in our plane. Yeah, so 
That was Yves Saint Laurent's um, atelier, if you will. So, the question is, what's next? I guess I should head back to work, right? I just wanted to get just a little break from the status quo and, you know, just clear my head a little bit. But I, as I said, I was watching um, another YouTube channel this morning and apparently the Sussexes will be in the UK in May, around the 8th or something like that, for a, um, a service for Invictus Games. And quite coincidentally, quite coincidentally, the entire royal family will be at a garden party to, um, you know, conveniently be absent, which which might be a good thing in the end. I mean, maybe it's better that they're not there, frankly. But um, I just think it's so interesting how the UK press excoriated Megan for launching American Riviera Orchard on the same night as William's Diana, William and Harry's uh, Diana Award ceremony. But here it is something for veterans, UK veterans and veterans all over the world. This isn't about Harry, this is about veterans, right? And you have a service at St. Paul's Cathedral in London to celebrate that and they couldn't give it the respect to be available or to keep a clear calendar while at the same time they lambaste Megan for soft launching her website. So, you know, the saga continues, I guess. And, um, you know, it seems like they are winning for the moment, though, doesn't it, with the, uh, the change of narrative. I think they're very good at that. I mean, that was a very skilled way to change the narrative, you know, just shut everyone up. Kate has cancer, you know, give us a video in a garden, which I'm told was a green screen. I'm not, I wasn't there. I don't know if it was a real garden or a green screen and, you know, from a, a long shot camera and, you know, have her tell us that she's got cancer one day after, I mean, and looking very unwell, to be fair one day after she was sprinting literally at a farm shop in Windsor and that basically has shut everyone up and then you start the second part of the campaign which is to threaten the Sussex squad and anyone who allows them on platforms to make sure that they remain silent with any further coverage of this lest they should lose their channels, their income, or even their freedom, depending on how severe the punishment that is unleashed, right? If you continue to question them. And then they tell us about the North Korean regime and the Chinese regime and the Russian regime and how terrible they are for infringing on the freedoms of their populations. I mean, it's just rich. But you know, I would love to see how far this goes, what President Biden allows to happen to American citizens as a consequence of all of this, especially in an election year. And that's not a threat, but it is to say that, you know, if, if we're gonna be voting for someone like Biden, then, and not Trump, because Trump is a bad guy and, and Biden is a good guy, and he's going to remain silent and only, you know, wish one, you know, one party well. I mean, Kate gets best wishes from the White House. I've never heard the White House extend wishes, concerns, support for the Duchess of Sussex ever, right? And then you're going to come and, you know, penalize people in the Sussex squad who disproportionately are people of African descent. And then you're going to come into African you know, neighborhoods with people who are predominantly African-American for votes. I mean, 
for me this is just a no-go right this is just dead on arrival i am not going to be voting for any leader i don't care who it is who's going to remain silent in a situation like that right and as far as i'm concerned trump is not a nice guy but at least he's honest about you know his not nice guy ness he doesn't pretend to be a nice guy he doesn't pretend to care about certain groups right so at least you know what you're dealing with you know and with others who claim to be the good guys you know there's a question mark i really don't know what they stand for anyway my darlings it's time for me to head back to to work so see you in the next one take care bye